So I want to start off this practice by saying this week in my classes, I've been, been inspired by the river. And at the beginning of the week, my blissful flow and gentle flow was based on the boat pose that we have in yoga and the myth behind the pose. Um, today, it's just a flow, so there's not necessarily a theme. Uh, but I did want to bring in a Rumi quote. And the Rumi quote is, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river running through you, a joy. So we're going to try to bring up that joy as we flow through our practice today. Anytime we do a flow practice, we want to tap into that element of water. And we'll start in child's pose today. I'll meet you on the mat. Come down to your knees and shins. Feel free to wrap your arms around you or to extend them in front of you. And just imagine like you're a smooth river stone at the base of the water. And as you're breathing in and out through the nose, experience the ripple effect of the breath as it rolls up and down alongside the spine. As if water was rushing over your back. Consciously control the breath in a slow rhythmic way. So that you're calming the currents of your mind. In the Yoga Sutras, it compares our thoughts running rampant like currents of water. And the breath is one way we can start to navigate through those rough waters and move back into a place that's smooth and peaceful and calm. On your next in-breath, let's walk the fingers out in front of us. Float the face up, look down the lane of your mat, or rock up to hands and knees. And as you exhale, Launch back into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, pedal the feet or walk it out. And then eventually travel the feet towards the top of the mat. Hang down in your Uttanasana. And just warm up the back of the legs. Create space in the low end of your back. And collect that energy and blood flow to the face, to the brow, and to the crown. And your next inhalation, bend your knees, scoop the belly in. And allow the back of the shoulders to draw you up. Once you roll up, let your shoulders descend from the face, chin parallel to the ground, look straight ahead with your eyes. Join your palms together to the salutation seal and we'll begin. Inhale, take the arms up alongside your face. Exhale, fold down to Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway up. And exhale, you're stepping back and lowering to Chaturanga. As you inhale, rise to Up Dog. As you exhale, roll it back to Down Dog. Hold and breathe, planting the palms, rooting down through the feet and soaring high through your seat. Gaze back towards the toes or the space in between. 
Make sure you have that same rhythmic pattern occurring with your breath. On your next in-breath, land the feet at the top of the mat. Open your heart center upon arrival. And then exhale, melt down. Inhale, come up. Exhale, return to Samasti to heave. Inhale, second A. Exhale, forward fold. In, halfway up. Out and drop it low. Hover until you're ready to breathe in. And then exhale, curl back over the toes. Pausing here in the inversion. Taking the reins of the breath. The currents or the thought patterns of a restless or uh, overactive mind is called avrittis. In other words, avrittis are like the rapids in the river. Inhale, feet plant at the top of the mat. Exhale, drape down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, Samas Tiki. Another A. Flow with your breath. Same sequ sequential order of the poses. Eventually pausing in down dog. Notice what muscles you may be leaving out and recruit them to come in. Inhale, feet at the top of the mat. Pike up with your upper body, and then exhale, release. Inhale to the top. Exhale, Samasthiti. We're going to do one more of those. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, sprout up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to down dog. Hold and breathe. Practice that ujjayi breath so you can gain victory over the mind. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, belly to thighs, heart towards knees, forehead towards chins. Inhale up. Exhale, Samasthiti. Moving onward to B. Inhale to Utkatasana. Exhale, fold down the middle. In and halfway up. Out and lower down. Inhale and build up. 
Exhale, take it back. Inhale, right foot steps through, back heel lowers down, coming to warrior. Exhale, release the hand, step it back, and take the vinyasa. For lack of a better term. <laughs> vinyasa is not just that sequence. It's so much more than that. Left foot forward, back heel down. Coming to warrior one. Exhale, release the hands and take the flow. Holding the third down dog a little longer. Inhale, come through to the top. Exhale, bow out. Inhale, fierce chair pose. Exhale, samastitihi, moving on to another beat. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. In and create some space. Out and continue to keep space between you and the earth. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, take the inversion. Right foot leads warrior one. Exhale, hands down. Take the flow. Left foot leads, warrior one. And then back into the flow. Pausing and downward facing dog. Finding your breath. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, release. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samasthiti. Another B. Inhale, starting here with chair. Exhale, folding to Uttanasana. In and pick yourself up. Out and lower down. Inhale, build up to straight arms. Exhale, rock and roll back. In with the right foot to warrior one. Out and back in the flow. Left foot leading to warrior one next. Out and back in the flow. Pausing in that third down dog. Head hangs between the arms. Keep the belly drawn in. Inhale to the top of the mat. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. All right, one more of those. <laughs> Inhale, chair. 
Exhale, fold down. In and lift up. Out to Chaturanga. Inhale to the heart opener. Exhale to the inversion. Right foot, then left heel down. Stabilize your warrior. Release and go back to the flow. Left foot leads next, right heel down. Stabilize for balance. Strong foundation is key. Releasing the hands. Taking the spinal flow. But remaining in downward facing dog. Let go of any effort in your neck. Plant the feet on the inhale at the top. Exhale, drape down. Into chair. Out, so samas tiki. Hands to the hips, hop the feet apart, shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Lace the first two fingers on each big toe. Lower the head and heart in. Padha Kustasana. We're down through the feet. Burl the big toes into the fingers. Try to straighten your legs. Try to lift through your kneecaps. Inhale, extend your spine a little. We'll look forward slightly. Exhale, remove the lacing of the fingers and take your hands under the feet. Burl back in towards your thighs. Let the head fall heavy. And the eyes can be open or closed. From foot over hand pose, remove the hands now. Bring them back to your waist. Drive your torso up. Bring the feet together. All right, we're gonna step off to the side. Make sure you have a nice distance between the feet. Rotate your right foot 90 degrees, lunge that knee. Stack onto the thigh bone and the left arm can reach skyward. Now, typically this is where we land in this Ashtanga format, but you can also release the left hand down. Sometimes we angle the top arm over the ear and you're welcome to do that as well. We're gonna change up the practice a little bit today. Be here first. Activate your back leg. Now lower the left hand. Spin away from the back heel. Let's fly the right arm skyward. Lower the left hand, turn and plant your back foot. Lift your left arm up again. I know we don't actually normally do two, but we're not gonna hold this one. Push down through that front foot to climb up. Rotate the foot in, then your left foot out. Lunge the knee, stack the elbow. The right arm can shoot straight up today just to make it a little different. Plug your left thigh bone back. Settle the outer edge of the foot down.
Test the water, see if it's possible to lower the left hand. If that's a struggle, come back to where you were. Now lower the right, spin away from the back heel and revolve to your left. Breathe. Lower that hand, plant your back foot, and then take the right arm up again, side angle. The arm can go straight up or angle closer to your ear. Not holding it as long since this is number two on the side. Press down through that front foot, revolve that foot in, take the right foot out. Keep the leg straight, lengthen out over, Windmill down to triangle. Sometimes we tend to collapse here at the base of the ribs and the top of the belly. So make sure you're really opening up space there. That can come in as you lengthen your spine. We're going to do a different variation of revolving triangle today. We're bringing that left hand down, turning to the ball of the back foot so that hip cranks and it is becoming square and even with the other. And then the right arm is going to spin up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lower that hand, plant your back foot, take the right hand back to your shin bone, radiate that left arm skyward. Rise up, turn that foot in, other foot out, lengthen out over it, windmill down to triangle, again, checking in with the diaphragm, Opening up more space. Keep your feet cemented to your mat. Now, when you're ready, lower the top hand, spin away from the back heel, take the left arm in the air. The breath always gets a little more challenging to me in this pose. If that occurs for you, just try to slow it down. Concentrate more or do less physically. Top hand down, back heel roots. Bring the hand to the shin. Oops, almost lost my balance. And carry the right arm up. When you're ready, bring it up to the top. Rotate both feet to be parallel. Hands are gonna go behind the back and you're gonna bring your hands to reverse namaste. And you're gonna kind of swim the hands upstream, shoulders back, elbows wide. Rotate your right foot. Offset your left foot, square the hips. I want you to open up your chest today. Open up your throat. Glue the feet down. And when you're ready, keep the same action in your shoulders and elbows. So your chest stays wide open as you descend down over the front leg. Gazing towards the foot. Good. 
Bring it back up. Keep your hands together. Spin around. Prepare for the other side, Parsva Tanasana. We're preparing by opening the heart and throat. Keeping the hands pushing together. And then eventually leaning out over the front leg. Slightly dialing the navel in its direction. Notice if your elbows flop and try to lift them back up. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, turning the feet. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to release that <laughs> action of that mudra behind our back. Let's play the arms to the sides. We're gonna forward fold and we're gonna loop the first two fingers around each big toe, kind of like what we did in Padagustasana. Elbows bend and fly forward of your shins. Bring your hands under your head and then slowly straighten your arms and radiate forward through the crown of your head. All right, notice how the belly may be sagging. So slightly plug the belly in, get some core support. Have the grounding line through the feet because you're gonna lift your hands, lace them together behind you, the shoulders crank back. And then we're gonna forward fold again, lifting the knuckles skyward. Release the hands. Slowly straighten your arms, lift your heart. Keep your feet pressing, your hands come to your waist and rise up. All right, you can turn your foot back to the top of the mat and step up. I'm just gonna step the foot over to the side. You can follow me if you want. Now we're gonna stack and stand. Sorry, I'm getting a toe cramp. Trying to work it out. We're gonna stack and stand on that right leg. We're gonna bend the left knee, open from the hip. If you need to be gentle today, this is your gentle treat, or you can slide it to your calf. If you want to challenge yourself, bring it to the upper thigh or half lotus. Hands can stay at the hips as long as you lift up through the sternum. Or of course, you can do anything else with your arms. We're gonna release that foot. We're skipping Padagustasana today. Stacking and standing on the other leg. Opening from the hip again. This is still a pose. Some days we need to do less. Some days we feel the need to do more. Set your eyes on one placement. down. 
All right, we're coming back to the top of the mat, hands to hearts. Inhale, arms circle up. Exhale, fold. Into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to down dog. It's nice to have that little break in between the vinyasas. <laughs> All right, we're going to bend the knees. We're going to bounce forward, crisscross the ankles, softly come to the floor, and then extend the legs. Lift the arms overhead. Fold to Paschimottanasana. Remembering touching or grabbing the toes is not the point or the goal, but if you happen to be able to easily reach it, then you can take that hold. Firming here, I am safe, I am sound, and good things come to me. Inhale, we're coming up, and we're going to slide the right foot back, keeping a little distance there. Right arm reaches through, we bind the arm. And then we circle the left hand to maybe bring the hands together. And then push your left thigh bone downward, gaze out towards the toes, unless that's not the best idea for your neck. Inhale, come up. We're going to take a hold of the front of the right ankle and we're going to bring it back alongside the hip. This is where, if you feel really uneven, you can take that blanket or pillow underneath the left side of your seat. We're just going to lean forward to place the hands down and walk the hands a little farther if your body allows. And just to give it a little different approach today. Like a little crawl dad crawling across the pebbles or stones at the base of a creek or a river. Inhale, we're going to walk the hands back. If you are sitting on something, take it away. Because we're going to lean on that left hip and we're going to bring the right foot to attach to the straight leg side. Now the arms are going to relift. Exhale, forward fold. Johnny Shoshasana. Smooth out your breath if there's any rough edges. Just like when you're floating downstream in a river, you'll go through the rough patches or the fun rapids, however you, you know, kind of look at it. And then eventually that water. Uh, just calms and smooths out, becomes so peaceful, and you can just coast without any concern at all. Inhale, we're going to come up. Now we're going to add in a hip opener. We're going to elevate the right foot off the floor, and you can hold it with your hands, or you can hook the arms around. We're lifting through the crown of the head on the inhale, and we're squeezing the shin in on the exhale. And do that two more times.
And then rock gently. Take the right hand under to the heel, the left hand to the top of the foot. See if you can take your half lotus. Right arm circles around behind the back. The left arm flares up towards the heavens. Exhale, dive in. Inhale, lift up, way. Exhale, release the back arm. Inhale, come up. Exhale, you're going to slide your left heel underneath your right knee. Still in half lotus if that's available. And then we're going to release over the lap. Your arms can work as your shoulder brace. And of course, if you're more limber here, you can sink lower. Inhale, come up. Exhale, straighten your legs. Inhale, fly the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up. Exhale, left foot slides back. Inhale, take your left arm through and exhale, thread the arm. Inhale, right arm reaches. Exhale, circle it behind you. Hold and breathe. Inhale, come up. Exhale, left hand to the top of the foot to bring it back to half. Saddle or hero. If you need a prop underneath your right sit bone, add it in. Funny, I don't need it on this side, but I definitely felt the need for the other side and you may have the same um, occurrence. We'll lift up. And we'll walk it out. Inhale, back it up. Exhale, lean to the right hip. Bring that foot around. Inhale, prepare for Janus Shasana. Exhale, strike that pose.
We're adding in the hip opener to this side too. So pick up that left foot. Decide hand hold or cradle hold. Extending the spine on the in breath and squeezing the leg in on the out breath. Rocking gently. Left hand scoops under, right hand to the top of the foot. Bring it to half Padmasana. Left arm circles around. Right arm extends up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, exhale, release the back arm, sliding the right foot in. Inhale, extend skyward through the crown and exhale, release. Let's back up. Now, typically, we would do some vinyasas in the mix here, but instead, we're going to come to Baddha Konasana. We're getting closer to the new moon. And uh, I know a lot of people doing the recording will be doing it right at the new moon, which means lower energy. So, um, we're going to stay closer to the ground. Fold into Baddha Konasana. Inhale, draw it up. Exhale, pull the knees together. Walk the feet out. We've been doing a lot of boat poses this week and the boat pose does show up in Ashtanga. We're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna lace the hands around the left thigh, lift the chest and lean back and then pick up the left foot. Now you can obviously be here. Maybe you need your arms to assist your core today, but if you want to insist on using your core, then you can release your hands. Release the right foot, grab your knees, pull your torso back up. From here, lace your hands behind your right thigh. Lift up, lean back, point the toes and keep the thigh parallel to the other. If you need core support, use your arms. If you want to activate the core more, hands release. Release the foot, grab the knees, sit back up. All right, half boat, hands flip under the knees. Flex and lift the feet up. Maybe straighten your legs. Okay, again, you can use your hands to assist or you can release. 
We're not doing the bump ups today because we did that a lot this week in Blissful. All right, feet together again. Fold down, Baddha Konasana. So instead of doing tortoise, because we've done tortoise a lot as well, we're going to do two of these instead. We're going to inhale, come up, latch the first two fingers running to your toe. Stay on your seat, flare the legs up and out. Upa Vista Konasana. If it's too challenging to do both at one time, you know, we're holding it long enough where you could do one and then do the other. Sometimes we roll back to plow and then roll back up to sit. If that's in your wheelhouse, if you wanna be a little playful today, you can do that. I'm just not gonna demonstrate it today. All right, we are gonna release the legs. So if you're back in plow, roll back up. See if you can catch and hold and then join us, feet down. And fold. The toes stay jutting upward and spreading wide. Inhale, come up. So again, we're leaving the vinyasas out. We're leaving the typical arm balances out, but I wanna give you an opportunity to try to do at least one arm balance. And you can set the hands down alongside your hips. You can pick up your seat and try to lift your feet. You don't have to hold it very long. I don't know what's going on today. I was getting a toe cramp earlier and then I was just getting a quad cramp. I have read that if you get cramps that sometimes it's too much calcium and uh, sometimes it's not enough magnesium. I don't know if that holds to be true, but um, I've also heard eating bananas can help. All right, we're gonna roll it to our backs. So take your arms out, scoop the belly in. And as you're rolling almost to your mid back, so stay on your low back, float your feet up. Take the right leg higher, catch it, scoop and lift. Swap to the other side. Scoop and lift. Now, release both legs. Release your head. Take a moment to flex the feet and place the hands to the abdomen. Close your eyes. Doing something a little different today. Walk the feet back together. Inhale, right leg up. Catch the thigh, calf, or big toe. Activate the leg on your mat as well. Now, how we're going to make this different, because there is this Padagustasana A that we sometimes do on our backs. We're gonna bend that right knee and we're gonna let it flare off to the right side like it's going towards the armpits. Swap your hand now and hold the outer edge of the foot. It's a better grip for what we're doing. It's that half happy baby. We're getting a little bit more hip work in since we've been inspired by the river and we 
River obviously is water and the water elements, the hip. So I wanted to add a couple extra hip openers. Now, if you bring that foot across your chest, lift your head up. You can have a handhold to the knee and foot, or you can bring in the cradle hold like we did with Happy Baby. But now we're moving towards a supine variation of pigeon. You don't have to do much with the left leg. You know, the foot can flop, the knee can be softly bent, unless you just want to activate it more. Really the focus is on the right hip right now. Three more breaths. And release. Ah, <laughs> that was a lot. So lay out in corpse. Let that sensation fade out. Walk the feet closer, fly the left leg up, hands attaching to the thigh, calf, or big toe. In this pose, the right leg is active. Exhale, bend the knee. Let that knee kind of roll off to the left side. Swap where your hand is placed. Hold the pinky toe side of the foot. You can get a better grip there. Draw the knee downward. Half happy baby. Bring the foot over. Lift your head up. So again, you can do hand hold, you can do cradle hold. And if you need to keep the head up, that's all right, but see if it's possible to lower it back down. All right, let's release. Take a moment, not rushing to the next one. Feel a difference. How it felt before versus how it feels now. So we're working this week with Matsyasana Fish Pose. So slide your arms straight and your hands slip under your body. Lengthen your legs, your shins, your toes. And then push down through the forearms, lift your whole torso up. Puff the chest towards the ceiling. Hang your head back. Firming my soul floats on waves of cosmic light. Lift the head up, tuck the chin slightly to lower down. 
Release your hands. Hug the knees in. Right arm to your right side, knee spin to the left. Inhale, knees to center. Exhale, roll them to the right. Inhale, knees to center. We're ready for Shavasana. So if you need to grab props, if you want to slide the legs up the wall, or if you just want to keep it simple today and to corpse pose, feel free to do that. As soon as you get settled, Close your eyes. This may represent the death of the other postures, but the yoga still continues. When you do things from your soul, you feel a river running through you a joy. Softly breathing, breathing softly.
On your next in breath, stretch your arms overhead. As you exhale, bend the knees. Maybe hug them in if that feels good. Roll to one side of your body. Come up to take a special seat. Whatever that means for you, whatever props you want to utilize, whatever form you want to take. Sitting up nice and tall. Checking in to see how you feel after this practice. Hopefully it's exactly what you needed. Remember, if it wasn't, I would take time to rest more or meditate. Palms together. Remember that quote from Ruby. You do things from your soul. You feel a river running through you a joy. Hopefully, you're walking away from this practice, experiencing or feeling more joy. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste.